Hey there, YouTube. I just got a new piece of gear and I'm very excited. So I wanted to share it with you. And partially because I think once you hear this, you're going to buy the exact same thing. So what is this? This is the EM258 from MikeBooster.com. It's a $20 microphone capsule. Uh, it uses plug-in power, but if you also buy the VXLR Plus from Rode, from Mike Booster as well, or any other dealer, then for under $50, you have an ultrasonic microphone solution. That's right. This little thing, from what I understand, it is the same as the Micro Uzi capsule, and it goes up to above 96K. Uh, I just did some tests and it appears to go with the right sources above 96K. Uh, granted, it's not linear above 20 hertz or 20 kilohertz, but it's there. So uh, you can't beat that for $50. Normally, solutions for ultrasonics are going to be the uh, 8040, but even that's not an Omni. And that's, I think, 1200 a piece, maybe 1400 a piece all the way up to 2500 for the second CO100K, which uh, you'd have to sell a kidney to buy or uh, maybe uh, your used car. Uh, so rather than sell your used car, uh, maybe try this $50 solution first. So I went and recorded some things and this is just a six millimeter capture. Look at how tiny that is. That's amazing. So I went and recorded some things right next to my KSM 32 here that you're listening to right now. Uh, for anyone unfamiliar, this is just a good studio microphone. It's linear, kind of an all rounder, nothing offensive. Uh, never the best mic for me. It's always just like, yeah, it's very good. It's good on overheads, good on drums. Uh, it's, it's a good solid workhorse. So I recorded both with this and with the EM258 next to each other. Uh, and I did that to show you why ultrasonic matters. So let's take a look at these recordings. Uh, this is a variety of sources. Um, I've used a Jaws harp here, a uh, Clacken. I uh, used a Super Bowl and a drum. I used my own human voice there at the end. And I used some uh, wind chimes as well. And as you can see in this EM258, there are moments where it's not clipping, but the sonic signature goes above 96K. Uh, that's amazing. And look at how much high-end detail it gets on these other things. Uh, then I'm going to jump to the KSM32. And I'm going to go back and forth. And look at how much more this 258 has compared to this 32. That's pretty outstanding difference. Now this never claimed to be an ultrasonic microphone, but rather than pay 2,500 or $1,200 for 50 bucks, you're, you're entering ultrasonic sound design paradise. Now, some of you may be watching this video that are not sound designers. And I have to touch on this. I see these arguments all the time about why record above, you know, 40, 48 kilohertz. Uh, as sound designers, we often pitch one, two, three octaves down, and we need those transients. If you pitch something an octave down and you don't have those transients, it starts to sound filtered, mushy, low fidelity, and sort of like a classic sound library. So by getting ultrasonics, we can manipulate to our heart's content, maybe even three octaves down and still have it sound organic. So let's take a look at that one more time. 258, 32. Holy cow, look at how well it lasers in on the transients itself and how well it gets that ultrasonic material. So back in Reaper, what I've done is bounce these out uh, in groups of normal pitch and then one octave down, two octave down, three octaves down uh, and applied it and just bounce it out. So you can hear sort of how it sounds. So here's just the EM258 uh, with a clank on the jaw harp. And I clanked it because that got more material than just playing it like a jaw harp. So that was the EM258. Let's hear the 32.
honestly not that different at this point it's kind of whatever most of these will probably be that way for the first set so at default pitches what you're hearing is not much of a difference let's hear me make some ridiculous monster sounds that are sort of stupid until i pitch them down <laughs> So one, this demonstrates that it's very similar to compared to the KSM-32, which is a neutral, linear, very good studio microphone. That's about, I think, $600. I didn't, I paid much less used, but I think they're about $600 new. Uh, so yeah, for 50 bucks, uh, satisfied just as a general microphone. Uh, it seems to clip a tad easier than the 32 and it's not in a housing and all these things, but Hey, it's 50 bucks. So let's go down one octave and see how these things start to fall apart and or hold together. So here's the one octave EM 258. Listen to the high end of that. See how it's already just at one octave sounding a little thinner, muted. Already starting to fall apart. Now let's hear a very single ping. Notice it's pure tonal, but it lacks that clarity of it. Now for this quick demonstration, I'm just gonna jump to the two octaves so you can hear that same ping. You hear that high end? Holy cow. It just two octaves, no chance. You need an ultrasonic microphone to get that information. And this is where the EM258 shines. Uh, let's listen to some other ones that are two octaves, like the, uh, the first metal hits. Holy cow, listen to the high end in that 258. Huge. So already at two octaves, you're hearing the difference. Now, what some people like to do is uh, do a crossover and blend these. And we can easily do that. You just find where you want that to pick up and take over the high end. So even if you want to say prefer the tone of another one or blend them, you can use this $50 solution as that additive extra high end after pitching to bring that back, to bring the clarity in or dial it in as you prefer. Uh, I'm going to take that off so we don't lose track of it. Now let's hear some, uh, some ridiculous voices. No plugins. See how it sounds more distant? 
It sounds filtered, muted. Huge. Now let's hear three octaves with the uh, clear bell tone. Even at three octaves, that's clear. Here's the KSM. Totally lost the clarity. So it's very clear. And say you like, uh, say you like the combination. Now with most ultrasonic stuff, you're still going to have to get an RX. And if you took a look in RX, you can see it's getting some ultrasonic tone there. I think it's from one of my new USB uh, power devices. Fantastic, right? Uh, and that that noise in the top, you're just going to have to get used to RXing things that you're not really used to RXing. Uh, I can show some tricks for that another time if anyone's interested, but that's that's sort of outside the scope of this video. What's inside the scope of this video is that a $50 microphone solution provides anyone an ultrasonic sound design solution. And that's pretty amazing to me. So don't go sell your cars for that sinking. Start here. Get that uh, micbooster.com EM258 Primo capsule with the Rode VXLR Plus. And I also got the uh, six millimeter FC034 rubber holder. And that's that that little bit around it. Uh, I still haven't figured out clips. You know, I've had it all of three hours. So this is just a very quick video showing off some ultrasonic stuff. Uh, and I hope you found this useful and get started on your ultrasonic sound design journey. Thanks for coming by.